This next novel is by an author I've only read once previously before, and that author is André Gide, the uh, famous 20th century novelist. And uh, this one is pr probably not his most well-known novel. It's called Straight is the Gate. Uh, as with almost all of Gide's best novels, this one concerns uh, anxiety and the yearning that's at the heart of human experience. Uh, a very young Jerome Palacier, uh, Palacier uh, regularly spends the holidays at the house of his aunt and uncle and their estate, uh, which is at uh, uh, Fongu's Mare in the rural part of Normandy. Uh, one day he happens upon his cousin Alyssa who is uh, distraught at her aloof, uh, hypochondriac mother. And both desperate to rescue her and drawn by a genuine affection toward her, Jerome takes it upon himself to sweep in and rescue her like a good Christian knight errant. The subtle imagery of Jerome as a kind of salvific hero is only a foreshadowing of the religious religious unease that drives this novel forward towards its uh, foreordained conclusion. Uh, Jerome portentously declares uh, a, a line from uh, uh, Baudelaire, and uh, it often talks about Baudelaire during the, uh, the novel. It recites it to Alyssa. Uh, Jerome and Alyssa spend these erratic, peaceful summers together reciting poetry, uh, reading from books to one another in their splendid garden and enjoying music. The appropriateness of Jerome's name jumps out at you once you mention, uh, once he mentions another of their mutual literary interests. Uh, he says to Alyssa, we had procured the Gospels in the Vulgate and knew long passages of them by heart. And of course it was Saint Jerome who made the first translations, uh, the first uh, Latin translation of the Bible. Jerome wishes to become uh, engaged before moving off to the Ecole Normale, but uh, Alyssa refuses. Uh, he's understandably upset by her rejection, but is only more spurred on by his ecstatic vision, again that religious imagery, of eventually marrying her. Eventually we learn that Alyssa has sacrificed Jerome so that her sister Juliet will be able to get married first. Uh, yet even after Juliet gets married to a boorish business-minded vintner, uh, Alyssa continues to push him away. Uh, he visits her at Fongu's Mare while finishing both his schooling and a military stint. But every time he mentions wanting to marry her, she rejects him and uh, requests that he leave soon uh, because she can't even bear uh, the look of him. Eventually, sh she tells him that her love of God surpasses her love of him, even though she's always passionately loved Jerome. Uh, during their last meeting, Alyssa has grown thin and pale Presumably, presumably because of her anchorite-like existence, and maybe even her refusal to eat. Uh, she's also removed the books of poetry and novels she and Jerome used to read together and replaced them with works of cheap, vulgar piety. Even while there is room here to doubt Alyssa's love for Jerome, a chapter that includes her personal journals makes it perfectly clear that she did love him just as much as he loved her, if not more so. Uh, Jerome has a final meeting with Juliet while she is um, enceinte, uh, pregnant, with her fifth child by the Vintner. Uh, seeing, uh, seeing him calls to mind both her sister's Christ-like sacrifice and makes her reflect on her own uneventful bourgeois life. As Flaubert said about Madame Bovary, uh, Madame Bovary c'est moi. For maximum effect, as noted above, uh, read this right next to Gide's uh, Le Moraliste, or The Immoralist, for a more effective uh, sort of couple of case studies. 
uh, considering the year of its publication, uh, which was 1909, and the ideas considered, which you know, repression, sexuality, sublimation of desire, all of that good stuff. It should be noted that Gide almost certainly had Freud in mind uh, when he was writing this, though it yields wonderful insights um, into human psychology even without a Freudian reading. Uh, when reading a novel, sometimes the most difficult obstacle to being able to truly and fully appreciate it is the historical change that's taken place between the time it was written and when you read it. Uh, judging from some of the reviews that I've seen online, this seems to be the case with this one too. Uh, in both this and uh, Le Moraliste, Gide looks at the tension, confusion, and repression that can often come about when romantic love is pitted against and forced to compete with uh, the love for the divine. Uh, since this novel was published, uh, this antagonism has almost completely died, uh, which may lead some readers to accuse Alyssa of being cold or frigid. But once we're able to br bridge and understand that historical gap, however, um, and, and realize that Alyssa did not see her, her torment as self-imposed, but rather uh, something that was required of her, um, sort of a sacrificial requirement. This novel proves itself to be a really superior meditation, I think, on both uh, romantic passion and what was at least once thought to be its opposite, sacrifice. Uh, a lesser known novel, I guess, but not lesser in any sense of the word. Uh, Straight is the Gate by André Gide.